Money printer go burr. Just why is that? What's up you guys? Thank you for watching Silver Oceans. I'm sure you've heard other YouTube channels talk about precious metals being a hedge against inflation and the US dollar, but what does that mean and how is it specifically relevant in 2021? There's a whole slew of factors and I'll touch on a few of them, but in this video we're going to focus on the Fed, the moratorium on evictions, and stimulus checks. I'm not a professional financial advisor. Do your own due diligence before investing in precious metals. US GDP rose by 6.5% last quarter. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, in 2020, GDP fell by more than 31%. We are seeing a turnaround in the economy, but it's far from a full economic recovery. Now, many of you have seen the money printer go burr memes. At this point, 40% of all US dollars in existence were created in the last 12 months alone. We're fighting a health crisis. We're fighting unemployment and a stagnant economy. In fact, we've already spent $9 trillion fighting the health crisis, and now we're facing a new variant. To put a trillion dollars into perspective, if you spent $27 million a day for 100 years, you still wouldn't have spent $1 trillion. When you increase the money supply without increasing production, you get inflation. There's no way around it. Look, how much more money can the Fed create? I mean, interest rates are already at zero. We're not in the position to battle another recessionary threat. The Fed is attempting to contract the money supply by offering reverse repos to banks and other financial institutions at 1 20th of a percent. And banks are going for it. It's up to a trillion dollars a day. You see what I mean? I mean, the thing is, banks have cash on hand, but they don't want to loan their money out. And I'll tell you guys this. I'm not saying they're behind it, but they know something big is coming. Same story with Wells Fargo shutting down personal lines of credit. Banks don't want to loan money right now. Foreclosures are coming. This is going to start ramping up in September. The number is 1.75 million foreclosures are expected, but I believe it's going to be well over 2 million. I really think we're going to see this real estate market turn around. If you've been waiting to purchase a property, I think you're probably doing the right thing. Millions of people have already started to lose and will continue to lose unemployment benefits. Now, on this point, hopefully these people are the same ones getting all these new jobs. The job market is strengthening. This crisis event we're facing is putting us in a national and worldwide decline. It's a public health decline and, as a result, an economic decline. Proponents of the moratorium on evictions say people shouldn't be subject to losing their home. Well, equally, property owners who rent to tenants are being subject to actually losing ownership of their home. It's the same home. This is not a case of freedom and liberty. It's a case of a welfare handout. I never understood this forced privatized welfare system. If the federal government wanted to keep renters in their homes, why didn't they foot the bill, right? They could have just directed HUD and other housing grants to a separate account to pay property owners their full rent. Then when the balance goes to zero, lift the moratorium. In any event, 7 million people are facing eviction when the moratorium is lifted, which has been extended through January 2022. We're in a tough spot, folks. If at this point the Fed raised interest rates, there would very likely be a market crash. 
That's the double dip recession you've likely heard about. And if the Fed doesn't raise interest rates, inflation will skyrocket. Now, on the stimulus checks, there may be a fourth stimulus check. This may or may not happen. There's been a lot of news about uncertainty in this regard. These handouts are just digging us deeper. People are paid to stay home, but the societal impact on young people is just sad. Children need to go to school and interact with other people. It'll be interesting to see how this remote school generation adapts to the job market in another decade. But these stimulus checks are beating us down. And the way it works is when the Treasury Department orders the IRS to issue checks, the Fed creates the money. It's a sacrifice of, and a slap in the face to, all of us that have saved our money over the years. If the Fed raises interest rates and we go into a double dip recession and hyperinflation, I don't think it'll be like the Confederate States which had 9,000% inflation during the Civil War, or Germany during World War II, which saw prices double every three to four days, but it will still be quite detrimental and clearly apparent to everyone. Those are some of my concerns, and it leaves us with the question, so how do you beat inflation? Well, one way is by being a borrower with a fixed interest rate, because the amount you will have to pay back won't be worth as much. But I wouldn't recommend that. The best way to beat inflation is by purchasing silver and gold. These are hard assets. They're real money with a limited supply. They're stores of value. For example, in the Civil War South example I gave, if you had a dollar's worth of silver at the beginning of the war, by the end it would be worth $9,000 for that same amount of silver. That's sort of a hyperinflation example, but I think it gets the point across. And if you saved paper money, it would only be worth one nine thousandth of its value. That's the benefit of hoarding or stacking precious metals. Silver and gold have been used as real money for thousands of years, so it's nothing new. But what is new, on the other hand, and some people have left this in the comments of my videos, they say don't buy precious metals, it's a not a smart investment, they're gonna go to zero. I, I just don't understand that perspective. The conventional investment advice is that precious metals are a store of wealth and that they're very conservative investments that are great during times of inflationary fears. Somehow this spin on the conventional wisdom of investing in precious metals has become more popular. But I'll tell you guys right now, I firmly believe in them. Are you stacking silver or gold? And how long have you been stacking? I'd be very interested to know. Let me know in the comments. Hey, a word pops up in a red font in this linked Eric Sprott video. Write it in the comments of that video for a chance to win an American Silver Eagle. You are incredible. Thanks for watching to the very end. Stack white as the ocean.